Welcome back to part two on ridge regression. In this video, we can go more into depth on how to use the data that we cleaned earlier with ridge regression, and also we can go over some really neat tricks on how to separate your data and all of that fun stuff. So let's get right into it. So now that we have all of our data that's categorized into our given buckets, such as the X train, Y train, X test, Y test, we are now going to have a lambda value that we want to tune. As I mentioned in my previous video for the theoretical aspect of the ridge regression, we need to find the best tuning parameter, i.e. the uh, lambda value. And we'll do this by having an array of lambda values and we'll plug in this array to find the best model that has the lowest mean squared error or the most robust model that we can have given that certain lambda value. So let us create a lambda array. Let's create a sequence. We're going to start it off with, I don't know, um, 0 0.001. Let's end it uh, to 100. And let's increment it by 0 0.001. We have a large numeric. That might be a little bit too large. Uh, let's do this. 0 0.01 incremented by 0 0.01. We have 10,000 10, values that we'll be plugging into our uh, GLM function, which is going to be our ridge value. So the ridge fit value, ridge fit, ridge fit is going to be the glnet, which is a built-in function. We'll be plugging in our x train, y train, and we want to make sure that our alpha is set to equal to zero, which is which is uh, standard nomenclature for a ridge regression. If we set it to one, then we are, we're going to have a lasso regression, and I'll be doing a video on lasso later this week. Um, so once we set the alpha to go to zero, we want to reference the lambda array, uh, lambda is equal to that. Let's run that, GLM net, oh, it might not actually be, and right before we actually run our ridge fit, we want to make sure we load in our given library, GLM net, so that we don't have any errors. And then once we run that, we get our ridge fit over here. So in this video, we're not really going to go into depth on how to identify the most optimal lambda to use, but in general, you would typically use cross-validation to find your optimal lambda uh, in relation to the robustness of your model and the mean squared errors that you will essentially, essentially receive. But there, there's a few things that you would want to know with the lambda values. So as lambda becomes larger, uh, this will start decreasing the significance of the coefficients. So that's like one of the key takeaways you should be taking with this as well. So now let us look into the, uh, the land of uh, values in relation to our ridge fit that we have going on over here. We can call the x variable, uh, what type of variable it is, and there's some built-in values with our given ridge fit. One of these values is going to be the lambda value, and we'll be labeling all of our values as true. So let's zoom that out to get a better look at that. But essentially, uh, let's see, yeah, at the bottom, uh, we have the, uh, the very top, 13, these represent all of the variables that are still currently inside of the model in terms of relevancy. So at each stage of lambda, or in this case log lambda, we have um, all of our models that are included. Now all of our um, all of our features in terms of like one all the way to thirteen somewhere, um, they're they're all here, but they're all can go slowly shrinking to uh, to zero as the more lambda we have. So there's gonna be like a significant uh, sort of like increase toward that specific area in terms of whether or not that specific variable is relevant to the model. So in this case, since this is shrink, uh, number six, since this is not shrinking as much as some of the other 
uh, values, then those specific values, 13 and 6 actually, are more relevant to your overall model than any other variable. One of our least significant values is going to be like um, number 3, which goes toward it goes towards zero much more uh, quickly than the other variables involved in our overall model here. And so as your log lambda or your lambda value in general increases more and more to the right, then all of our coefficients are going to go towards zero. So the higher the lambda is, the more shrinkage there is going to be with all of your coefficients until they're all zero. So after we plan, or after we plotted um, the relationship of the lambdas and the coefficients, let's take a look at the goodness of fit. And so this is gonna be something similar of, war, of where we'll be plotting the ridge fit. And instead of lambda, we're just gonna have dev. Let's zoom that out. Uh, let's take a look at that, hopefully. Yeah, I'm not blocking it. Similarly, we have all of our variables, 13, 13, 13, etc., that are still involved with this given model. And we know that there is a significant uh, dip or uh, variance that's straying away from the given, it's around like 80% of the variance that's being straight away. Um, but that's where all the deviations or all the in this case, coefficients start to diverge further and further out, and we just have, you know, we we would have like a like a nice visual that's associated with the goodness of fit with our given variables and our given uh, coefficients that are involved with this particular situation. Now that we have a great visual on the goodness of fit, let's get our predicted values now. Cool. So let's get the, let's call this Y predict, uh, predicted. We're going to be predicting with our given uh, ridge fit, the ridge fit, it'll just be, okay, we're going to be using a predict function and we're going to be using the ridge fit equation um, and our S is going to denote the type of lambda we're going to be using. In this case, since we're not really hyper tuning or anything like that, I'll just be calling the minimum. Uh, lambda of the array, um, although there are ways to find that lambda value, uh, as I mentioned earlier, but in this case I'm not doing it for this particular video. Uh, but the new x, we're going to call the test x, uh, the x test actually, and let's call, yeah, we'll just do this, um, y predicted. So these are all the values that are predicted given our test uh, inputs, which is the t x test. Let's take a look at the coefficients, um, which are going to be over here. So coefficients, we're just gonna call the type as coefficients. Yep, and these are the coefficients that are involved with our model. As we can see, not all, oh yeah, not many are actually very close to zero if we're, if we're using the lowest uh, lambda value, but that's to be expected, right? So once we do that, once we have a prediction, let's get the, first let's get the uh, sum of squares uh, total and the sum of squares error. Um, let's calculate those out so we can actually get the goodness of fit and then we're gonna calculate the mean squared error. So let's do that SST, which this is essentially um, over here, which I've actually pre-written some code that does that because I didn't memorize it. Uh, sum of squared total is it's essentially the sum of squares of our true values, which are our y test, and we get the mean of our y test, and then we get the sum of squared error, which I conveniently wrote that over here. I get our y predicted, and then we subtract that from the y test, we square it, and then we sum up everything. Let's calculate that out. Now our r square value is this one subtract the SST, no SSE divided by SST. Let's calculate that. And so the R squared, we have about 65% of our variation um, explained in this model, which is all right. It could be it could be better, but we'll take what we can get. Now let's calculate the mean squared error. 
I've also conveniently wrote out the equation on what that looks like. In a previous video, logistic regression video actually, I explained more into depth on what the mean squared error is, but essentially it's just a mean squared error for your overall model and how well your model is doing compared to the predicted results with the actual results, your true values. So we're just going to get our y predicted values, we subtract that from our true values over y, and then we just divide by the number of uh, y values that we have, and also make sure we actually sum the squares that. So let's calculate that. The MSE, we have an error of 32.5, which is, um, it's all right. It could be better. Once we have an understanding of what our mean squared error is, well, regardless of whether or not it's like horrendous or good or bad, we can get a good visual on what that would actually look like. So let's actually plot that. Let's get our on the x var on the x axis. Let's get the y test, and then on the y axis, let's get the y predicted. Y predicted. So an ideal plot would be like a straight linear line uh, that just has like a one-to-one -one slope, but you know, in real real life, we're not going to get something like that. But let's do that. Main uh, the title just predicted price versus actual price of med median value household. Y test. Uh, y test. There we go. So this is what it looks like. Uh, so obviously, it's not going to be a linear line. There's obviously some outliers over here that can definitely be. Uh, take a look at to have like a more robust model. How, to, how would you clean your data and so that you don't have this scenario going on? But in general, this is what we have for ridge regression, and it's it's a it's a better model than linear regression. <laughs> All right. Well, that concludes my video. It was rather long, but you know we got through it and linear regression, ridge regression, lasso regression, all of these types of regressions are in general really good to know and they will act as a base for you to understand more complex, more robust models out in the future, which I will do videos in the near future. So I'm glad that you made it this far and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you. I wasn't recording. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god.